Uh, welcome to this morning's session, and uh, uh, my name is Alan Bergstein. Um, I'm a long-time uh, publisher of many different types, and... Thank you. Oh. Okay, I'll get to that. Thank you. Um, and one of the things that I do is I help people get their content out uh, in front of many, many people around the world in many different ways, including uh, through all the marvelous uh, digital ways. So. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how we can take some uh, old information and port it over to WordPress. Uh, it, at first, before I get started, can I get a show of hands, please? <laughs> Good. Okay. Just want to see if you're with me. Great. Actually, um, a show of hands uh, this time. Um, how many people have uh, are publishing on WordPress right now? Wow. Great. Fabulous. How many people have some old sites that they really want to bring over to WordPress right now? You're in the right room then. That's perfect. Okay. And then uh, one last uh, set of questions. Uh, are we talking about small individual sites or are we talking about, all right, so half maybe? And then how many people have like large, uh, like company type sites, uh, complicated goods? Great. Okay. The other half. Terrific. All right. Well. Um, so, oh, and, and if I will, uh, I'll be very happy to answer any and all questions. Um, uh, if we can hold them actually towards the end, that would be that would be great because I want to kind of go through a sequence of things first that might make sense, and then uh, take all questions. And then if we run out of time at the end, um, pardon me. These slides are all going to be online. I think all the presentations today are going to be up on WordCamp. You're going to get access to that. Um, I have a lot of information here. I have a lot of, of links uh, and resources that I put towards the end of it. So, uh, you know, hopefully I'll give you a lot and we'll convey this. So, um, and I'm also going to be um, stationed in the expert zone today at 2 o'clock if anybody wants to uh, come up there later with any more questions or uh, catch me anywhere in the hallway or wherever. So, um, the things that we're going to cover, why WordPress, uh, why it's a great migration choice, and it really is. I don't think you'd all be here today if you didn't think that. Um, how important it is to review your current assets. Those include content, images, graphics, downloads, codes, everything else that you have in your old site that you want to bring over. Prioritization is really, really important. We're going to take a look at, at that. Um, how you figure out what to move and, and when to move it and, and how to move some of the pieces. Um, SEO considerations. Um, assessing you know, wh what you're at right now, what your links are. Everybody know how. Who knows how valuable links are and how hard they are to get? All right, and, and those people that didn't hold your hand up, trust me, that's a very, very important thing, and you want to make sure that that moves over with you. Um, you don't want it to affect your Google ranking. Um, has anybody had a um, uh, moved over a website before? And anybody, anybody who's moved over a website, have you had any um, surprises? <laughs> Things didn't quite go as well as, as they should? Okay, so some of you have had, and so it's very easy to happen. Um, some back-end considerations, front-end. Uh, we can talk about staying organized, very important thing. This is a migration is not, um, a, a, it's not really an easy project, and there's a lot that can happen, and so you really want to stay organized. Please, if, if you take nothing else from this, back up, back up, back up, back up 15 times. You can never have enough backups. You're going to use them. Um, Timeliness, cost considerations that go involved in what's easy, what's going to give you a headache, and then um, what I think is almost the most important step, and I'm going to save that for those few people who stay to the very, very end. We're going to be here for about five hours, right? Is that Okay, good. So WordPress, you know, why are we here? Well, it's a very comprehensive platform. I heard from, in the last session somebody said, well, I'm a blogger. I didn't know you could do all these other things. You know what? Let's put that myth to bed here, and let's, you know, communicate it out. WordPress is a terrific website platform. It does all sorts of things really, really, really well. Um, and that's why 50 million people have downloaded it. It's scalable, it's extendable, it's affordable. Um, you can do things with it that you really can't do with some others. Um, one of the best things about WordPress is the community. There's lots of information about it. You can, it's easy to find people who know what they're talking about. It's easy to find people who are very, very knowledgeable and very willing to share their knowledge with other people. Um, and, you know, WordCamp, I mean, this is a great example. And, and you know, there's probably going to be a thousand people here over this weekend. 
and we're all going to be sharing lots of great information. Um, the plugins, which you're going to use, which add functionality into a site. Um, I mean, there's just, uh, if you can think it up, it's probably been created. Um, and it's SEO friendly and it's got great, great code. So all the right reasons of why WordPress is good to start on. But let's start out with what you have right now, what you're on. And, and that's a, the need for you to take a, a strong review of your current assets. You know, WordPress basically divides things into two areas. You've got your content, which goes into a database, a MySQL database. And in that content, you've got things like the text articles and images and graphics. And, and if you start to take an inventory of what you have that you want to move over, it'll be very, very helpful so that you don't lose anything. The other side of it are your files, and your files are the code, and JavaScript, and Flash, and templates, and the plugins, and widgets, and, and your licenses, all of those things that, again, you have, and you want to make sure that you, when if you're going to bring it over, um, you're purposely bringing it over. Other things to also put on this inventory list, an, an Excel spreadsheet, you know, or a Word document, wherever you want to put it, um, it's great to write it all down, but, but um, your links and your backlinks. Um, let's keep track of them, and there are many tools that will give you a very good printout of what you have. Um, your Google settings, your analytics settings, I mean, don't lose them. It's, it's easy to lose them, and so you want to make sure you've written them down, as well as passwords and user accounts. So get all this down. Oh, one very important thing, and an easy thing to start with, actually, is, is a, a site map. And um, let's see if I can get over here if this is going to work. Right. So. Running a sitemap, this is on, on my personal old site that I, I ran this on. Uh, no, I'm pardon, this is on the new site. But there's a lot of tools that are out there, um, many of them for free, and they'll just give you a really, really good way for you to see what you have on your site. And you print this out, and um, you write it down so that when you're transferring pages over or, or directories over, you can check it off and make sure you've got everything that you think you have. And, um, and that's very, very helpful. All right, so um, that's my old site. And um, so my old site, what I wanted to do, I'm just using this as an example, um, I had uh, uh, lots of things on it. It really was basically a brochureware site that I wanted to um, do a lot with. It had been up there for about five years, um, I hadn't really updated it too much, and when I, and the reason why I hadn't updated it is because frankly it was very, very challenging, and, and anytime I'd have to, you know, load up Dreamweaver and do lots of things to it, and it, it just, it was there. I was busy on other things, and sometimes it got woefully out of date. You know, it's, it's a terrible thing. I, I, I don't do this, <laughs> I'm telling you, don't, don't do what I was doing to my own site. but. When I, um, and I built it in, in sort of a typical, you know, web 1.0 type way, which is, it's, it's like putting up a brochure on the, uh, uh, on the web. What I wanted to do, though, in, in analyzing um, uh, my needs and my goals for the future was I wanted to bring it over in a different way. Um, I wanted to use uh, WordPress. I wanted to use the content management system. I wanted to use all the publishing tools. I also, since I develop sites and, and, and uh, uh, web businesses for people, I wanted to be able to use this as a living laboratory as well. And so um, there are many things that I designed into it um, that were very different, but I had to bring a lot of content over and a lot of it was very challenging because of the way that it was structured in the past. Um, one thing, this flag here at the very top, um, which I, I I liked for my old site, I put a lot of time into it, it was built in Flash, um, and I wanted to bring it over into the new site, but in a different way, and, and again, very purposely, because um, today we have to be very considerate of our new viewers our, our, who are using mobile devices, and, and if anybody has uh, a mobile device, particularly if you have an Apple mobile device, whether it's an iPhone or an iPad, uh, you know that Flash is not supported, and it won't be supported. Um, so um, you have to do things in a different way and take that into consideration, and so I was able to build in um, a way so that on uh, sites that support Flash, that shows up in, in all of its glory, and the sites that don't, you have an alternative page that showed. So that's just an example of the type of, of consideration that you need to give when you're migrating from an old site to a new site.
Pardon me? Oh, okay. So, um, all right. It's important to start to make lists of things and to start to write down. What, what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? What's the scope of the project? That's a very, very important thing because if anybody's ever built something, you know that you know, if you just start off somewhat haphazardly and, and meander through the process, um, what you're going to end up with is not necessarily what you thought you were going to start out with. And so, you know, l put it down, communicate it to people, um, communicate it to yourself, bounce it off of other people, what's the scope, what kind of a conversion process are you going to use? Um, you know, is this going to be just, you know, you're going to go on as, as and learn? I mean, a lot of people um, like to learn things about websites and about, and so, so they use it as an educational process. If you have this, th this is your business, um, and you have got a short period of time to make the conversion, and you have money involved, and you have a lot of people that you're supporting and a lot of users, you really need to know these things up front. So um, things like who owns the content is a very important thing. Again, if it's your own site, you own the content. You don't necessarily have to ask a lot of permissions, but if you're in a company, um, it might be somebody in another department that actually owns some of the content that's, that is displayed through your site. So it, once you have an idea of all the content that's up there, um, you should really start to assign ownership rights to it and have people review things. This is a great time for you now to take a look at the old, and in some cases old might be six months, in other cases it could be six or 15 years old. You know, a lot of that content may not be relevant today. So it's a great time for you to assign it out to other people, take a look at it, figure out what needs to get moved, what's gonna stay up there, what's the time frame for keeping the old site up, are you going to now, while you're building the new site, are you going to go in and continue to up, update the old site and the data? These are all decisions that have to be made and, and at least thought about. Um, and what's your staging and production plan? I, how many people here work in a sandbox staging site before you go live? Okay, let me ask you the other way around. How many people just throw their site up live to the world and whatever it is? And that's gonna be a good many of you. Please, people, learn about sandboxes. Learn how to do a website on a staging area that's you know for your eyes only or for a short, a few people. And then once that's ready, then move it up live because things are going to go wrong. You are going to have things shown that shouldn't be shown. And you know what, the internet is forever. So, you know, even though you may not see something or you may make a change, you know, there, there's 10,000 or 100,000 servers across the world that have already taken a snapshot of that mistake. So work on a staging and then roll it up. Uh, and what's your testing plan? How are you going to, once you've moved everything over and once you're ready to go live, how are you going to test it out? Who's going to test it out? Who's going to bang on it? Again, these are all things you need to think about ahead of time. Your content considerations. Content is, I'm going to, spend more time on content today than, than anything else. You know what, in, in my mind, the design of the site is almost the easiest part of it. You know, and if you want the site to look like something that you've done before, you just find a theme or you find somebody who can, who can make it look like that. That's the easy part. The tougher part is getting all the content to behave right and getting all of the pieces of content to show up in the right places at the right time, in the right language, in the right form, in the right colors, etc. So, you know, again, working on your inventory sheet, the things to consider is, you know, are you dealing with well-formatted, structured content to begin with? You know, if so, that's going to be fairly easy to then move over. If it's random bits and bytes, like the way that I designed my old site, where you just have stuff that's in different places, it's going to be hard to automate that process. And, and you know, quite honestly, one of the, one of the uh, easiest ways to, uh, to move one site or the content from one place to another is, is copy and paste. It, it works. Um, there's some tricks to it, but you know you can do sites uh, and, and move them over that way. Um, uh, the links, you know, and your, your pathways in particular. Are you dealing with absolute or dynamic or, or uh, reference pathways? It's important to know that because when you move some stuff over, that link's going to look for something, and it's going to be a lot easier for you to, to understand um, why something is not showing up, why an image isn't coming up or why all of a sudden something else is coming up, or why you're getting a 404 error, if you understand how your site was structured beforehand. So these are important things to take a look at. Um, are you dealing with excerpts? Are you dealing with 
um, uh, full articles? Are you dealing with, how many items are you dealing with? I mean, that's something that uh, I often start out and ask people. How many pages do you have on your site? Don't know. Okay, I mean, that's an, kind of important because depending on what you're dealing with, you're, you might take a different approach to moving something over. And in your category tags, how many people have like spent countless hours, you know, making sure that their content is tagged in an appropriate way so that it's easy to find and reference? And you don't want to lose that work when you go forward. Uh, one of the um, best tools that I've found to take old HTML content and to move it over is a conversion tool uh, called HTML2 Import and uh, done by um, a, a brilliant woman by the name of Stephanie Leary. Uh, her site is sillybean.net and if you really want to dive deep into content migration, um, I, I think she's just absolutely the master on it. I've got her information later on, but um, uh, she's got great tutorials on this if you really want to learn a lot about that and she's, uh, she's an expert on it. Uh, great tool. There's other ways that you can actually take your whole database and, and migrate that over. And, and actually, if you're moving from an older WordPress uh, site to a, to a current WordPress site, that's actually fairly easy. And WordPress has, as you would expect, some built-in tools that allow you to do that very nicely. Uh, my strong advice is always start small. Take a couple of pages uh, or a couple of different types of pages and test, test them. Are you able to move them over with the different parsing tools? Do you have to copy and paste? Is it coming over clean? Once you have a good sense on two or three pages that come out of a particular template off, played off your old site, then if you want, then start to ramp it up to 50 or 100 pages. Or um, uh, Stephanie told me one of the projects that she recently did for a university that she works for, she had moved over 10,000 pages, and it was very, very successful. And so. Um, this, uh, these techniques can scale, but again, please test, start small, and expect that you are going to do, have to do a certain amount of scrubbing. Um, headlines aren't going to always be in the right place, or subheads, or some character sets are going to be different depending on if you're moving from one hosting environment to another, and you might actually be, you know, have to go in. So give yourself the time, or if you're in an organization, um, you know, make sure you're, you're putting people into an assigned area where they're going to be scrubbing some of the content as it comes forth. You are, you are going to have to do that. Uh, a project that I'm working on right now is a large site, actually. It's an ad agency, um, 15 years old. Um, uh, their website is 15 years old. They've got thousands of pages on there in different types of templates. Um, uh, many different content types are on there. Um, and uh, we're not going to be able to, we want to move it into WordPress. And we're not going to move it all at one time. So we're going to have um, several sites with links back and forth, and, and hopefully it'll be somewhat transparent uh, to people. But um, uh, the site looks like this right now, uh, lots of stuff. And every one, every item that you see up there is linked to all sorts of other directories and pages. Um, if we go into just one page here as an example, um, I can show you that with this tool here, which is uh, this HTML import, based on some settings that you might set here, you might put into this, um, we're going to be able to bring over some of the data. And if we view the source on a page like this, and you look at this, you see there's an awful lot of stuff back here. So, so if you're using a parsing tool, you have to be able to tell that parsing tool essentially what to bring over. Because you don't want to bring everything over that's on, on that old page. You don't want to bring all that old code. You really just want the content. And maybe you want some of the, um, some of the, the uh, descriptions or some of the classifications to come over. And um, you have to experiment a lot with some of these settings sometimes to be able to, to know what you want. You basically, you want well, every... Um, Every page that you have, every content type has uh, some sort of a, a, of a unique paired um, set of tags that say, this is the start, this is the finish. And those can be in many different places. And so uh, without going too deep into it, if you're able to define that a bit and find the right set of tags, then you can bring things over somewhat cleanly. And I'll show you as an example. 
Um, and this is just to show you the different ways that content can come over if you, depending on how you look for it. So here's one set of data that's now brought over, and it looks like this. Remember again, the, the old, what we're trying to do is get something that at least looks sort of like that to come over in place. And we can have it looking like that. We can get it to look like this. We can get it to look like this or like this. And so we have to make certain decisions. So again, I'm not, I'm not, my purpose here today isn't to show you how to use this tool. It's simply to say that there are tools out there for you available to bring content is. Once you get like one or two pages off of a template that work right, then you know what? The next thousand pages ought to come over pretty easily. But even there, again, as I said before, plan on spending a little time in scrubbing. So four, I, I, I can think of four typical methods really for moving content over. Uh, well, fifth, the fifth one being just retype it. But let's avoid that if we can. So um, copy and paste, it's effective. Um, sometimes it's actually easier than starting to play around with, with the more automated tools. Particularly if you've got a site that might have 50 pages or so, you know, it's not that difficult. It actually, in that process, it gives you a chance to be hands-on, eyes-on. You're really going to be taking a look at those pages very carefully. Do they need to be updated? Do you need to bring them over? Is there something that you could say that's even better? So that's not a bad way to do it, um, and, and, um, uh, and it's fine. Just RSS feeds. You would think that that would be an easy way to bring stuff over because of all the stuff that you're getting. You're getting author, you're getting dates, you're getting headlines, you're getting content. But it, it really isn't very complete, and it's not going to give you everything on your site. So it's not a very effective way to bring stuff over. Um, these export and import scripts, such as the ones that are within uh, WordPress, um, they can work pretty well. And again, particularly if you're going from WordPress to WordPress and the third-party parsers, um, if you get to know them and you get to love them, you know, they could be your best friends. Um, so within WordPress, here's just a screen on how you export something and then conversely how you, how you import it. And as you can see, WordPress has built in imports from a number of different, you know, um, popular areas. Uh, fairly easy to get to know and, and to use. Um, and this is what I showed you before, the import. All right, moving on. So SEO considerations. Um, uh, is there anybody here that, that doesn't understand the importance of search engine optimization? Uh, un unless you're building a site that's going to be a, an, an intranet, it's only going to be for a small number of eyes. If you want your site to be seen by a lot of people, you have to build it in such a way that's going to allow it to be found. As you move from one site to another, there are things that can have dramatic effects on your ability to be found, such as, you know, are you going to keep the same domain name or are you going to take this as an opportunity to change it? You know, a domain name that you might have bought 10 years ago um, is not necessarily the best domain name that you would have going forth today. Um, so this is also a good opportunity to think about that and say, do I now want to, for whatever reasons, and there are a multitude of reasons, do I want to make that change now? If you do, it will have certain effects and ramifications that you just need to be mindful of. Changing your URL structure. You know, it was very common uh, several years ago that the URL was just a string of, of letters and characters and it, it just con it conformed to uh, your internal database, particularly if you have a um, proprietary system. Um, but SEO best practices, you know, you, you would really have the title of that article as part of your URL structure. So if you're going to make that change now, you know, that's going to also potentially affect some of your old links and your SEO. Again, these are just some bringing attention to this saying you should at least be mindful of this before you just make a wholesale change because it could have other impact as well. Um, proper redirects, web analytics. Please make sure that you test your code, um, your, your Google code, and that it's on all of your new pages going forward. I, I've seen many times where all of a sudden huge blocks of pages, just the code never got put on the bottom. It was assumed it was there, and they just never showed up in the analytics, 
reports and it, and it had uh, uh, problems there. So again, just things to be aware of. Um, Backend considerations, special functionality built into your old site that may not work in WordPress. I, I had a, uh, just a small example, I had a nice uh, news ticker on my old site um, that worked out really, really well. It was ticker top, ticker on the bottom, and they did different things and went in different directions, and, and um, that was lovely. And I wanted to bring that into the new site, and I probably spent easily 10 to 12 hours researching where could I find that functionality. Uh, I mean, I probably should have just written the code from scratch, but but I, I was determined to find it as a test plugin and put it up there. And then, you know, it took me four days or so talking to the people who wrote the plugins to try to get it to do different things, the settings. So sometimes a little piece of functionality that you had working so well before can actually take you a lot of time going forward. Um, uh, had I done the testing on my old site as I ended up doing on the n new site, but I should have done that beforehand on the old site, I would have made a decision that I ultimately made, which is to not put the ticker at all on the new site. Um, and so I wasted a lot of time and effort and energy and money on something that I probably should have just said, ah, that's something I'm not moving over. You know, we know that the readers don't like that. Uh, databases. Um, you, if you have large databases that have lots of members in there and then authors and customers or e-commerce, Again, you want to just be very mindful of that and make sure that you know what you're doing in terms of moving that information over or somehow porting it over. It can be done, but just be aware that those are things that can get a little bit more complicated. Um, you're linking your, your URL structure. You know, if you've got a series of pages that have, have points, you know, the paths that are saying, look over here, but those are relative paths when you're over here now moves over there, it's not going to necessarily find things. So absolute paths are a little bit uh, more of a headache to, to program in, uh, not that much more, but, but they're at least going to always get you where you want it to go. And when you change them, you know they're going to be changed right. You need to just look at your site, your old site. What are you dealing with? In many cases, you may be dealing with uh, mix, and uh, mix and match, and, and just knowing that, uh, at least you're aware of it. And um, the tracking codes also, you know, Google, um, Google now has this new uh, asynchronous code for uh, website uh, for their analytics. Um, it goes in a different place. It doesn't go at the bottom. It goes more towards the top. Um, it's more accurate. So this could be a good time for you to now change that code. Anybody here still working with Urchin code on their site? Um, you know, it was what Google bought. Ultimately, they turned it into Google Analytics. A lot of older websites still have the urchin code uh, formats on there. This is a good time to take a look at that, to read up on it, to be knowledgeable on what you want to change. And the front end, as I said, the design, um, you know, that's almost the easiest part. But, you know, here's where you get a chance. Is that let, me, let me think about what the next couple of years should look like, and let me put some time into that. Um, very, very important. Uh, moving to mobile platforms. I mean, don't take that for granted. Don't, don't assume that your site that you have and, and look at in this, you know, on your gorgeous, you know, 30 inch high def site is gonna look just as well on, on your little iPhone. And your customers are gonna be looking at things on the iPhone, so um, be prepared. Um, do usability testing. It's not that difficult, and you don't have to, you don't have to test, well, anybody ever read uh, Steve Krug's book, Don't Make Me Think? Uh, maybe 20% of you guys have. Uh, please, the other 80%, get your hands on a copy of it. It's, it's great, very simple. Don't make me think. Um, and it's, uh, uh, it's terrific. His, the essence of what he's saying is that, you know what, do usability testing in small batches. Um, get three or four people to take a look at something, give them a task. If they can complete it, you've done a good job. If they can't complete it, fix that task, move on to the next thing. And you're going to find lots of opportunity to make dramatic improvements for moving your site while you're doing it. Um, let's see. Oh, and, and another great tip. I, uh, take a look at your analytics today. Make printouts of it. Make screenshots of those reports. Put them in a folder. Put them away in a safe place. You're going to want to do a benchmark you know, uh, before and after. Um, it's really easy for that stuff to kind of get lost uh, three, four, or five months down the line when, you, when you're when you looking for that. So 
uh, run those reports now and put them in a safe place. Stay organized. Uh, again, this is this is not necessarily an easy task to move something. There's lots of moving pieces. There are lots of things that can happen. Um, assign tasks out if it's a large uh, uh, site that you're working on. Uh, assign the responsibilities. Assign deadlines. Uh, keep good notes on every step of the way, every change, every plugin that you put in. You know, one of the one of the great things about WordPress is that it's open source. One of the challenges of WordPress is that it's open source. You know, which means you have all these different people writing, you know, code, and and they're putting it in in their environment, and it works. But every plugin that you add in. Every piece of functionality can have an adverse effect on something else, somewhere else. So keep a good record of what you're adding in and what version, and when you've got a problem, you can then start to back things out and figure out what you have to remove. Um, print out instructions. I mean, the, the, this is, again, there's, there's no reason to think you have to know what all up here. Um, if, you, if you've got something from a WordPress codex or a tutorial that somebody has written, print it out. and. Do what I do, you know. Put big red check marks next to a, a part of it that you've done. You know, write big notes on it as to you know modifications that you might have made, and, and stick it in a folder that's part of this project plan. Um, and um, I love Evernote. I don't know anybody use Evernote or something like it. Yeah, I mean, to me, you know, that's just a great way to do it. Other people might like stickies or Notepad Plus or or just an old spiral notebook. I mean, you know, you'll you'll use whatever works for you, but but just use it. Um, there's actually a, a cool thing here that's, uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, N-D-I-Z-I -I project management. It's actually a plug-in to WordPress that you can make your site into a project management tool. And that's particularly useful if you're collaborating with others. And you can you know, let others see where you are in the different stages. OK, can we all say this together, please? Back up. Has anybody ever lost any data at any time? Come on. All right, all right. Who hasn't lost data? Be honest. You know, go on, right? And you know what? It's, it's going to happen to you, you know, at the worst possible time, right? It, it's, storage is cheap today. I mean, it's ridiculous. Back it up. You can back it up on your, on your hosting server. You could use... Um, uh, an FTP manager to back it up. Uh, you can build in automatic backups and, and just do it. You're going to have to always come back to it. You are going to want revision changes. Please, back up. Okay. Uh, timeliness, cost considerations. Um, very important question to ask yourself. Are you going to do this yourself? If you are, do you know what you're doing? Um, if you are the type of person that, that can get through this, that's great. You know, and, and uh, there's lots of help out there for you. Um, if not, you know, what's your opportunity cost? What else could you be doing that would be very productive? And um, uh, because there's other ways that you can get it done. Um, who has an army of a, of a web dev or an IT staff that they could rely on? Um, there's one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, and, and so the question there is, you know, uh, what part, how can you get into the, into the queue to get your project done? Because chances are your army uh, also works for a lot of other people in your organization. And so these are things to, you know, you think I can get this whole thing done in, in two months. Well, you know, they're going to tell you something else. And you just need to be aware of that. You can outsource. You can go to freelancer.com. You can, you can hire a virtual assistant. You can get a summer intern. You can hire your nephew, your kid. You know, there's lots of different things that you can use to get people to do pieces of this, be thoughtful of it. You can hire a highly trained professional, you know, because you might decide, uh-uh, this is too difficult to do at home by myself. And, and there are people out there who will do these things as well. Um, easy things. Um, anybody know the old adage, you know, why, why was God able to create the world in six days? And the answer, he didn't have legacy to deal with. And so if you're dealing with a blank slate, you know, it's easy. I mean, you really can start fresh, and, and that's the best way to start many times. Um, and, uh, you know, understand things about settings. Um, it's not too difficult to learn. Uh, you're going to have to use them many different ways. What is a little bit more challenging, very manageable still, is converting some 
structured content in bulk. You know, you want to move a thousand pages over, you can do it. Um, there are the tools, I've, I've shown you a couple of them there. Just, um, you know, understand that's going to be a little bit more challenging. The heavy lifting are things like um, striving for full automation. You know what? It's just not going to happen. It's going to take you a lot of coding work, um, and um, uh, it's probably beyond the scope of, of what we're talking about here. Um, but converting Flash for mobile OS, you know, that's also a challenge. Um, it can be done. It can be done in pieces. I've done it. Um, you need to be thoughtful about it because, again, there are going to be more and more and more people looking at your sites on iPads than on computers. Um, and there's an awful lot of Flash. How many have Flash on their old site? Well, I'm surprised more of you don't, but, but there's an awful lot of Flash. And for God's sakes, don't build your whole website in Flash anymore. It's just, you know, you're, you're going to have to build two websites if you do that. Um, Oh, and replacing, anybody have advertising on their site? Just a few of you? Um, and, and are we talking about the Google AdWords or are we talking about full-fledged advertising that's, that's being sold? Because if you're dealing with an ad server, that's a whole other set of issues that need to be considered and you need to communicate things out and, and do it the right way. Yeah, WordPress is great for that. WordPress really is. And again, we can talk more about some different things afterwards. Um, and, and possibly the most important must-do as you're planning this, um, is for God's sakes, future proof it. You know, do it right this time so that two years from now it's going to make your life a lot easier. Um, what could go wrong? Nah, nothing, right? Um, you know, these are the things that we covered before backup, work in a sandbox, stay organized, purge what's old and not needed. Fresh content really is king going forward, so, you know, you don't necessarily have to bring over 10,000 pages if they're not relevant anymore. Structure your content for future portability. Give yourself time. Communicate your priorities. Talk to your advertisers. Benchmark, audit, test, poke at the site. Make sure that the links right uh, are, are correct. Uh, resist scope creep. Very, very important. You know what? Know what you need to go live on your deadline, and then the rest of it gets phased out a month later, a month later. That's okay to start to roll out additions. And Read the tutorials, ask plenty of questions, come to word camps. You know, that's what we're all here to learn about here. So um, uh, this is going to be on, on the slides. I'm just going to flash through very quickly because I've only got a couple minutes left. But uh, these are the plugins that I use when I'm doing a site conversion process. Um, here's my uh, web development toolbox that I have. Many of these tools are, are remarkably free or, or really, really cheap. Um, by the way, uh, for those of you who use uh, or might use BB Edit, which is a great tool to use, it's now up on the Apple App Store for $39 instead of the $99 that I paid for it just six months ago. Um, and um, uh, the hosting service is very important. Um, I love HostMonster. Um, the only plug that I'm giving them is a great price. They've got uh, all the tools that you need. They are in Utah. They have live service. And you know what? When you're doing changes, sometimes you really need to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. These guys will walk you through it really, really well. Um, and, um, you know, you'll, you'll get that special pricing if you put in, just mention my name. And, uh, again, of course, help from the WordPress community. Um, I use, uh, for my development, a lot of use uh, a framework called Thesis. I also use Headway. Both of those um, communities are great. They've got a lot of people that can help to solve your problems. WordPress.org. Uh, there's a site called WP Candy, Smashy Magazine, and the Boston WordPress user group is, is great. Um, and here are some, I mean, there, there's thousands of places that I can go with articles, but, you know, if you wanted five really good tutorials on this, here they are right here. So, thank you. I think I have, like, maybe four minutes to, ask, to answer a couple of questions. Again, I'm going to be here all day and tomorrow and up at the zone. Lady right over there, and please speak into the microphone that's coming up right behind you. Yep. Hi, thank you. Could you speak a little bit about 301 redirect? Yes, 301 and how you redirect, do it? yeah. It's um, a very, very important thing. You've got um, uh, people that may have links to your old pages. They may have them bookmarked, they may have them embedded. Hopefully, they have them, you know, they've written about you as the world's foremost expert on something, and then they've linked to you. And that's a great kind of link for SEO, for Google ranking, etc. You want to make sure that that link 
when when you're moving over to another site that that is redirected properly and so there's all sorts of tools on how you can do that over there and with the microphone please um, I'm just curious um, have you always worked in WordPress or do you have have you done any of your other sites in oh yeah I, I've, I've worked uh, in Drupal I've worked in Joomla I've worked in well, Dreamweaver, a lot of HTML sites. I've worked in some proprietary content management systems. So, you know, I, I, um, you know. Comparing, like, Joomla to WordPress, do you find that when you're converting something, and uh, I assume that on this particular site you were talking about that you um, were using more or less the tools as opposed to hard coding, um, and do you find that you have more bugs or less bugs com WordPress compared to Joomla? Well, that, that's that's a whole nother session, um, okay. uh, and again, uh, that's you're going to have people. I was at Drupal Camp last month, and you have people over there that are very passionate about uh, about Drupal. Uh, I've not been to Joomla Camp, but I imagine it would be the same thing. You know, to me, a lot of web development it's it's like uh, playing musical instruments. Um, you know, if you know that tool, if you have, if you can master that instrument, you're going to be able to make beautiful music with it. And I, I know that you can build beautiful sites on Joomla and on, on Drupal and all these others. So I'm not going to stand here and tell you that one is better than the other. It's really how well you're, what you're going to put into it, what time you're going to put in an effort to make that as good as it possibly can. Okay. Over here. Uh, the best free alternative to Vault Press. Okay, well, uh, I've, I've actually, uh, there's two that I put up there. One, I think it's WP Backup. It's a plug-in, and uh, you can set it. I have, I have all my sites I back up at least once a week. They just get emailed to me. Um, also, if you're on HostMonster, and, many, and anybody that probably has a cPanel, um, they have something called Backup Pro. It's like 15 bucks a year. It's ridiculous. Uh, it just backs it up to the server. So I get them both ways. I get coming to me and also on the server. Right All here. Right. Um, we're out of time. Oh, we're out of time. Okay. Come see me. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Do great things.